Okay, now let's introduce a corollary, corollary one. And so it says, where one matrix reduces to another matrix, each row of the second matrix is a linear combination of the rows in the, of the first matrix. Okay, so the way we're gonna prove this is we're gonna use proof by induction. Okay, so now we're gonna start with the base step, right? So the base step is that, you know, uh, it is true that when uh, K is zero, so uh, that when uh, we take zero operations, um, so using zero reduction operations, um, the two are equal, right? Because again, think about the uh, reflective property, right? So if we take K is equal to zero, right? So meaning zero operations, it's obvious that matrix B um, the rows of matrix B are linear, linear combinations of the uh, operations, of, uh, the rows of uh, matrix A, right? Because we can just write beta, beta I, right? Equal to zero times alpha one plus zero times alpha two plus dot, 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 plus um, um, one times alpha sub i plus dot, 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 plus zero times alpha sub n. or excuse me, M, right? Okay, so that's trivially true, right? Uh, so that's gonna be the base step. And then for the inductive step, we're gonna assume that this is true with K greater than or equal to zero. Okay, for some K value greater than or equal to zero. Right, we're going to assume the hypothesis holds for all operations, all K operations for K operations that are uh, greater than or equal to zero. Okay, for some K, right? Now, so what we're going to do is that we're going to say for any matrix that can be derived from matrix A in K or fewer operations has rows that are linear combinations of A's rows. Now what we're going to do is we're going to consider a matrix B such that reducing A to B requires K plus 1 operations. Okay, and let's also say that uh, the matrix G is the matrix right before matrix B. Okay, um, so let's say we're going from A to G and to B. And let's say G is the matrix that's right before B. Okay, so it takes K steps, or here. It takes K operations to go from A to G, and then of course, to go to B, it would be K plus one operations. Right, or one more operation. Right? Hopefully that makes sense. Now, now the inductive hypothesis applies to G, right? Because again, 
That's what we're assuming. We're assuming the hypothesis holds for k greater than or equal to zero. So we're saying, okay, if it takes um, k plus one operations to get to b, right? Now we're going to assume we're going to say, let's say for b, the final matrix, we're say, saying, okay, what about k plus one operations? Okay. Well, and we're also saying, okay, let G be the matrix before B. So this would be K operations to get to G. And of course, then we know that the hypothesis holds, that's what we're assuming for G because we're within, we're, we're talking about K operations. So with that being said, G, each row of G is a linear combination of the rows in A. By hypothesis, that's that's the the hypothesis. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to verify that the rows of B are linear combinations of the rows of G. Right. So we know that the rows of G, each row of G is the, is a linear combination of the rows in A. Now we just need to show that the B is the linear com is a linear combination of the rows of G, which then by extension is also a linear combination of the rows of A because of the uh, linear combination lemma. Okay, so now um, which is basically what we're going to be using. Uh, so, now, so we'll verify that the rows of B are linear combinations of rows of G. Then the linear combination lemma applies to show that the rows of B are linear combinations of A, which is what I just said, right? So now, if we, if the row operation taking uh, G to B is a swap, let's, so let's go through the different elementary row operations. Let's, Let's talk about a swap, okay? Um, and I'm not going to write this down. Let's talk about it. If, if to go from G to B is just swapping two rows, right? Well, what happened there? Well, nothing's changed. All we did was swap the rows, the order of the rows. There's still linear combinations of G, which are linear combinations of A. So we didn't change the fact that they're linear combinations of A to go from G to B. So there you go. So no problem there, right? Now, um, what if we take um, a scalar multiple of one of the rows? What if it takes, what if it takes taking a scalar multiple of one of the rows in G to get to B? Okay, well, all the other rows are going to be left unchanged, which are linear combinations of the rows of A. And when we take a scalar multiple of a row that's a linear combination of the rows of A, we still get a row that is a linear combination of the rows in A. So again, the other rows are unchanged, and you still get a linear combination of that row um, that was a scalar multiple still is a linear combination of the rows of A. And then what if we finally take uh, a row operation that is adding a multiple of one row to another row? Okay, what if we did do something like, you know, taking a um, a multiple of one row, row I, and add it to row J. Okay, what if we do something like that? Okay, now again, all the other rows except for the row that's being added to are unchanged. Okay. So in this case here, the only row that is going to be changed is row J. All the other rows will be unchanged, as we've seen in many other examples uh, that we've done. Okay? And then only row J 
of B differs from match from matching row from from the matching row of G. Right? And so all we're doing is in B is we're going to take um, beta J, right? So beta J for that row that's changed, all it's going to be is it's going to equal um, how do I write? Uh, C alpha sub I plus beta sub J, right? Or no, gamma, I'm sorry, not alpha, gamma. So we're just, we're C is just some scalar, right? We're just uh, taking a multiple of one row and adding it to the other. Now, as you can see, as you can see, this is still a linear combination, right? Where we know that this gamma row, oh, yeah, these should have, sorry, these should be vectors. So we can know, again, by hypothesis, this is a linear combination of what? Of the rows of A. And again, you can obviously see this is also a linear combination. So again, we're fine. Okay? And again, we can see that it's definitely a linear combination of the rows in G, which are linear combinations of the rows in A. And because we've proved both the base step and the inductive step, the proposition follows by the principle of mathematical induction. And we are done. And we've proved the corollary. Have a great day.